Hi guys, welcome to this last video in my series on filming puppets. Today we're going to look at the end of the uh, the whole process, which is your post-production. Post-production is essentially your video editing. So you've done everything you need to do. You've worked out the why, the where, the who. You've worked out uh, your planning, who, uh, who you've got available. You've worked out your shot list, you've worked out your equipment. You've gone and done your shoot. You've abs done absolutely everything you need to do and you have absolutely nailed it. So this is the time you get to put all that hard work together to produce something that people can actually see because none of it is worth anything if it's all just higgledy-piggledy bits of audio and video files um, because it won't make sense to anybody, especially as you've probably shot it out of order and if it's anything like any, any cameras that I've ever shot on or video cameras or whatever, um, the naming conventions just don't make any sense to anyone. Okay, but assuming all of that, you know, aside of all of that, you've nailed it otherwise. So this is the post-production. So the first thing I would recommend with post-production is that you take all the footage and all the audio and you go through it and you rename it and you organize it, especially if you might have taken three takes of something, you know, you know, name, if, especially if you've um, made a note of what a scene uh, scene number etc is you know you can say this was week three scene four then name your footage week three scene four um, and if you've done multiple takes perhaps name it take one two and three um, in order of preference or, or in order of the the way it's done but I would certainly say in order of preference would would be the, the my, my suggestion um, if you've taken separate audio to what you've got in camera then you, again, you want to match up the audio to the footage. So again, if you've taken week three, scene four for your video, and then you find the audio recording that goes with that, name that with the same same thing so that the two match up. And then when you come to actually edit things together, you can drag them in rather than going, oh, hang on, which of this list of 30 things does this actually relate to? Um, even if you've gone through and picked out the key footage that you think is what you want, keep everything. Don't throw it away because you can guarantee if you throw something away, you will need it. Even if it's because, you know, of that two minute bit of footage that's absolutely awesome, there's a bit at the end that actually is a problem. So therefore, you need to substitute something. So always keep it just in case, certainly until the everything's finished. But even then, I wouldn't get rid of stuff if you've got the space for it. Um, one thing with regards to, that makes post-production easier as well, which is something I should have mentioned in the shoot, but I'll mention it now, is um, always have space at the beginning and the end of your shot. So let's say I'm here, I'm just about to do what I'm doing. Now, when I'm here, I'm stood, and then I'll start talking, and then at the end, I'll stop, and the video is still videoing maybe for three or four seconds afterwards and then I'll go and turn things off. If you do it so that you go action and people start talking and then they stop talking, you cut, it gives you no breathing room. You know, if you're doing a transition from one scene to another that maybe, you know, you're going into a dream sequence and the um, instead of just a cut, it kind of comes down, you know, breaking up through as if you're going into a dream sequence. If people have started talking the moment you've got action, you've got nowhere to go with that because as it's changing, people are already talking. Uh, whereas if you've allowed three or four seconds at the beginning and the three or four seconds at the end, then you can have the transition and then people start talking. So I would certainly allow uh, footage either end of what you're actually doing where you're not doing anything. Um, another thing as well that um, can make life a lot easier. Uh, again, I should have done it in the shoot, but I didn't, so I'll do it now because it helps in post-production is with any audio, always try and take, um, <clears throat> excuse me, just some um, ambient audio. So for example, with this room, if I was doing something with the puppets or whatever, before I did any recording with the puppets, I would say, right, everyone quiet. I would then set the recording going and that would just be a baseline of the audio in the room. The reason for doing that 
is if there's anything that it's a problem where you need to switch out in the audio in not necessarily here but if you're outside you might have a plane go over or you might have you know in if you're in a field you might have a farmer shooting his gun or whatever then if you were to just cut that then you'd have a blank bit of space where there's absolutely nothing going on and you will notice the drop out of audio whereas if you've taken some background audio you can splice that in and therefore it won't won't be noticeable <clears throat> so there's a couple of things just to help you so you've shot everything you've reviewed the footage you've renamed it all you've organized it and you've you've put it where you need to um, the next thing is the editing now as far as editors are concerned, you can get very basic editors and you can get very complex editors. Um, and a lot of it depends on how many things you filmed, whether you've got multiple angles, uh, multiple cameras, multiple audio. Are you doing on green screen? Are you doing compositing? Um, if you look at my early videos, <clears throat> I'm effectively just doing the filming with myself and the puppets in a background. So all it is is the video and in some cases a separate audio file. So a basic um, editor is all you need and there are lots of them around. Um, this isn't about video editors because that's a thing in itself. Um, but if you want to know more, Google, you know, look on Google or YouTube. I can tell you what I use and what I have used, um, but it's not a definitive uh, thing on video editors. But the, more you, but the more you want to do, the more complex they get. So in the beginning, you, you know, with video and audio, it was fine. In the, the most recent one I've done, which was the Back to the Bible summer series um, last summer, if you look at those, in some scenes, I've got a footage, two separate bits of footage of the puppets, along with the two separate bits of audio. I've then got myself, for example, a car, uh, which I've uh, imposed the puppets onto, and then behind that I've got a green screen, which I've then put a background onto. So I've got several layers, I'm do, doing compositing and everything else to put all that together, and that actually takes a lot of memory and a lot of work, and for a basic video editor that doesn't normally kind of do what it needs to do, so I use something a bit more complex. Um, I actually use a program called Blender. Now Blender is an open source uh, program which is completely free to use. You can subscribe if you want to have sort of higher privileges and, and that sort of thing and you can contribute to it but for day-to-day -day use if you want to you can de download it it's completely free now you do need a computer that's got a, a little bit of oomph in it um, if you've got an older computer then it's not really going to cut it um, ideally you could get away with sort of eight gigabytes of ram um, and a reasonably decent um, uh, cpu processor um, but Ideally, you want uh, a GPU, which is a graphics card, which is designed uh, for doing uh, lots of rendering, um, a decent amount of memory, 16 or 32 gigabytes, and quite a decent um, CPU as well. But some of you may have that, some of you may not. Um, but the more complex you want to do things, the more intensive it is, and therefore, ultimately, you're going to have to find a, a more powerful computer. Now, it might be that you can find somebody or have somebody in your team or in who you just happen to know who can do those things in which case make use of them if they're happy to do it people that are nerdy like myself with regards to tech um, are normally quite happy to do that kind of thing um, so you know you can always ask around if you don't have the facilities yourself but anyway I digress so when you want to do the editing obviously you know you need to put everything in you need to cut everything together and then you end up with your your finished footage now um, as well as the footage itself, you know, are there any uh, visual effects that you want to add in? You know, if you're pretending that your puppets are in a, a minefield uh, or whatever, or there's bombs going off in the background, do you need to add um, special effects of a bomb going off in the background, for example, um, or, or that sort of thing? Or do you know, do you need to do an effect of a heli uh, helicopter flying past or whatever it happens to be? Um, some of that you can get stock footage. Um, some of that you can do using models, for example. Um, again, in the summer series that I did, um, there's the most recent one, which was the one on the back to the Bible. Um, I had a shot of the DeLorean car coming down the road towards the camera um, and disappearing with the flame trials behind. Now, that DeLorean car was actually that size, literally that size. It was a uh, scale diecast model car and all I did was I had it on a table with a green cloth 
I then tied some um, invisible thread onto the, the car. I then put it in the background with the camera in the foreground and then I pulled on the thread to bring the car along um, and then I put that through uh, a chroma key uh, filter to just isolate the car and then that's how you got the car coming through. So again, that takes a bit more processing, but you know, these are things you can do, but these are things also you just need to think about the process of doing. Another thing that, um, or another two things that I've kind of got more into as I've gone along that have added to my puppet uh, films. Uh, one of them is Foley, which is basically sound effects. So uh, for example, in one of the uh, summer series ones, um, they the puppets were locking the door um, as they were going out the house. So I recorded putting the keys in the lock, turning the keys and taking the keys out, something quite simple. Um, There's another situation where they went on a drive. Um, so I went out in the car and I recorded the sound of the car driving along. Um, and then having that in the background, you know, you've not just got a picture of two puppets sat in a car and there's nothing going on because if there's no sound, <clears throat> it can actually be quite boring. So again, that's something that I've got into more and more and actually you find that it will add to it. It's something they do in all um, Hollywood films or and even low budget productions you'll find will have uh, some sound effects, some foley of some degree. Now, as well as making your own, um, you can actually get sound effects and a very good place that I use is called freesound.org. And as the name suggests, everything is free. Um, so you can go in there and people have done sounds of different sound effects. Um, I put a couple of mine up on there, um, but people have also done background music. Uh, and there is a section where you can actually say, could somebody produce X sound for me? Now, often the most uh, anybody wants is just credit. So you say, you know, this is my film and I'll credit to so-and-so for supplying these sound effects. In some instances, obviously, if you're doing this to make money, um, they would appreciate some money in return, but generally it's free or it would be very cheap if you were going to make money off of it yourself. Um, so that's something worthwhile. Now, another thing is background music. Again, there are certain circumstances where music adds to uh, a film. You know, if you're doing something simple, like a sketch or whatever, then music doesn't really matter. Um, if you're doing a... Um, a parody song or something along those lines what I would recommend is that you record your puppets doing whatever they're doing and then you and then play the, the track whilst they're doing it in the room but then completely ditch that audio and put the uh, original track over the top and then that way you don't get any background music at all um, so that's a way of doing that but if you're doing a like this like I've done with the summer series you would just add in the, the music in the background. Now it might just be very low so that you can hardly notice it. In some instances, um, like in the summer series with the Back to the Bible, when the DeLorean's getting ready to go, you have the whole Back to the, the Future theme to, to kind of build up um, what's going on. And it's more than just, uh, oh look, there's a car coming towards me. Great, you know, it's it does add atmosphere. So it's certainly worthwhile doing. Um, and then the last thing is some sort of titles or credits. Um, you may find that that's worthwhile for what you're doing. You may not. It depends on your situation. Um, but when I'm doing the summer series, I always add something so that people know what they're watching. And I generally put some sort of credits at the end um, if it's appropriate. Now, the last thing is file format. Um, you just want to make sure that you save it in such a way that it can actually be used. You know, are you burning it onto a DVD to show through a DVD player? Um, are you loading it up to YouTube? Are you putting it on the local church system or youth club system or whatever it happens to be? Um, most things are digital nowadays. Um, so chances are you'll probably just do it in a digital format and MP4 seems to be the go-to format for these things. Um, but always make sure that whatever you format you do it in, it's appropriate for what you're trying to achieve. Um, and the last thing is legalities. Um, you know, if you're using anything, um, just be a bit careful, especially if you think you might want to use music from a well-known uh, film or, or whatever it happens to be. Uh, there have been a couple of instances where I've used um, f uh, music from things like, for example, with the Back to the Future, I use clips of that music just to help set the theme. Um, and although I haven't had a copyright strike against me on YouTube, they have put a mark against that and said, 
I can't monetize that and if I did any money would go to the copyright owner which is fine I you know at the end of the day I just put it on there so that people can see what I've done I don't plan on making any money out of it it's just to help people learn and you know if they enjoy it then great um, so that's just something to be aware of it's the legalities um, and making sure there's nothing there that could get you in trouble so just some closing thoughts really um, just to kind of tie things up um, Green screen and visual effects uh, can be great, but they're not always a good substitute for real life. So if you're going to do green screen or you're going to do VFX, um, depending on whether it's appropriate or not, don't do it just for the sake of doing it. Um, always do it, um, bearing in mind the whole outcome of what you want to achieve. Um, if it's done well, it can be really good, but it can be done badly. And if it's done badly, it just looks worse than trying to do things real in the first place. Um, Another thing is don't expect Hollywood type results. Uh, you know, there are there are plenty of Muppet films out there. There's also, also things like uh, The Happy Time Murders, um, which is a, a recent film with, with Muppet type puppets, um, which has shown live action, full puppets, so on and so forth. And actually, if you look at like behind the scenes of that, they've got sets that are built with a, a false floor up here somewhere so that you can have a, a real life actor, but then you can have someone with a puppet and, and so on and so forth. So these things have a lot of money thrown at them. Um, and even the puppeteers, you know, do puppeting day in, day out and they get paid for doing that sort of thing. And the puppets that are made are the highest quality because, again, they're made for that. And in some instances, there's two or three copies with different aspects to them. So don't expect Hollywood type results, especially if it's the first couple of times you've done it. I've been doing this for five years and I'm still far from doing any Hollywood type results. So, you know, be realistic. Just enjoy the whole process. Um, you'll learn from your mistakes as you go along. Um, you know, there are things that I don't do now that I used to do and things I do now that I didn't used to because I've learned as I've gone along and I'm sure I will continue to learn. Um, above all, just have fun with it. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the result of that process. If you enjoy it, the people around you will enjoy it and the people that you show will enjoy it. Or well, hopefully they'll enjoy it anyway, but certainly if they're in the same room. Um, you know, on YouTube, the stuff that I show is out of context and people may or may not enjoy it but I know that when I show it in our church during the summer that actually the kids all enjoy it and even a lot of the adults enjoy it um, and that gives me a kick gives me a thrill I you know it's just nice that people do enjoy these things so enjoy the process have fun um, I'm pretty certain I've covered most things um, I'll probably do something uh, additional at some point about using blender and doing visual effects and how I've done some of the things I've done um, and um, also looking at green screen that sort of thing but as far as an overall this is how to film puppets I think I've covered most things um, but if there's anything you think I missed stick it in the comments let me know and I'll try and address it but I think that's about it so thank you very much for watching